All right, welcome, my friends, to episode 675. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We had quite the quite the issue getting started, so we apologize for being a little bit late today. But hope you guys are doing great wherever you are in the world. This is episode 675 of Extreme Health Radio with our good friend and guest, Mr. Adam Bergstrom. It's going to be a great show. We're going to talk about. We're probably going to bounce around a lot. He put mind hacking in the subject title. We're probably going to talk about lipofuscin we're probably going to talk about all kinds of cool things so he is a contrarian of the contrarians um i was telling our academy members this morning that there's definitely a a mainstream alternative uh, and he is definitely not the mainstream alternative so this will be really fun i'll introduce him in just a second this is uh, like i said episode 675 so if you guys want to grab the show notes or any of the links for the commercials or anything we talk about i'll do my best to put everything at extremehealthradio.com forward slash 675. And if you're new to the show, uh, we broadcast every Friday morning at 1045. <laughs> I, I say we try to broadcast because there always seems to be technical issues. But I looked up this morning and it said, Google told me that Mer Mercury is in retrograde. And check this out. I found out that it was it goes out of retrograde on November 3rd which is interesting timing, right? Um, but next Friday, we got Dr. Gerald Smith, and we're gonna talk about the missing links into degenerative diseases. Dr. Richard Massey, Morley Robbins. Um, we're gonna wanna have, let's see, Dr. Michelle Lamasa Schrader. We're gonna have a lot of cool guests coming up. So if you're new to the show, please subscribe so you don't miss any of these shows. And um, okay, so I think that's all the little house cleaning here. Um, Adam Bergstrom, if you're not familiar with him, you should be. He's been on our show like 20 times by now. Um, amazing guy. And he's been teaching workshops, seminars around the USA since 1977. Uh, he has 50 years in the health and healing and, uh, and nutrition and connecting with people and counseling with people on various diseases um, since the 1970s. And he's written a book, Yes, No, Maybe Chronobiotic Nutrition. And if you're like, what the heck is chronobiotic nutrition? We'll talk about that on today's show. And he's been into this um, since 1979 when he graduated from O'Donnell Lay's Texas Institute of Reflex Scientists in 1979. So first of all, before anything, let me just ask Adam. Um, Adam is, that school still around, the Texas School of Reflexology? Gone. It only lasted for about two years. It started in 1976, went on for three semesters, and during oh. the three semesters, it went down the tubes. Now, Adonald Lay, who was the main uh, figurehead of the school, he started visiting me out in California four times a year for a month at a time. And basically, we kind of called it the Texas Institute of Reflex Sciences Western Campus. Oh. So uh, hanging out with Adano, it was a <laughs> continuous process. He didn't really sleep like ordinary people. He didn't yeah. sleep at all. So as long as you could stay awake around him, he was teaching. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. Now, where did he learn most of his information from? Where, where, where did uh, he get that? The ozone. <laughs> you know, he, he had one day in school. He went home from school and uh, told his dad, they can't teach me what I want to learn or what I want to know. And his dad said, okay, then go to work. So he did. He went to work and he became a tailor when he was like five years old or so. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And this was in South America. And after he became a successful tailor, he had people working for him. At about 15 or 16, he went to the Caribbean islands and finally migrated into New York City where he got a job, various jobs working uh, for uh, Jack Dempsey, the boxer, a, in oh, his right. kitchen, cutting cheeses and things like that. <laughs> he worked other jobs, uh, really appreciated the jazz clubs in Harlem at the time. And then he went on to Schenectady, New York, where he worked for uh, RCA. Oh, he really? became an RCA engineer with no schooling whatsoever. And uh, they sent him to Canada in Montreal, where he put in the first uh, radio tower in Canada uh, personally. Wow. Golly. That's crazy. Crazy story. And uh, when, when did he pass away? Or when did he? That was in 1989. 89. October okay. 10th, uh, recently. Uh, 30, let's see, 30 so many years ago now. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Were you shocked when that happened? 
Oh, beyond shock. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, when uh, Adonis always said that there's two ways to tell about if you're a sympathetic nervous system type or a parasympathetic. Uh -huh. The parasympathetic will think of excuses. Like if your mother says, I need you to come here and help me. The parasympathetic type thinks of all kinds of things. How can I not get there? Like I don't have the money. I don't have this. The sympathetic mm -hmm. type says, I'll be there. And they show up somehow. So when I got the news that Adonis had gone on his cosmic vacation, I just walked out the door with a suitcase, very inappropriately packed with whatever I could put in. Wow. And my girlfriend drove up and said, where are you going? I'm going to uh, Virginia. Uh, how are you getting there? I don't know. I'm just going to stick out my thumb, I guess. Well, it turned out that I got a plane ticket there and a plane ticket back, and it all worked out without wow. any planning whatsoever. So, Is that I where his funeral was? what he was saying in a very uh, traumatic way. That's interesting. Was that where his funeral was? Yeah. He happened to be back uh, uh, teaching in a civil war house that had Civil War bullets in the door still, oh and gosh. he was doing a workshop then, and he just didn't come down. So they found him up on the toilet when they broke in, completely clinged out, and sitting in a meditative pose on the toilet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And how old was he when he passed? I would say in his 60s, I believe 64 or so. In you know, he had a lot of injuries in his life. He had fallen off a building in uh, the 1950s, a three-story building. Oh, was wow. in the hospital for one year and nine months on that one in Canada Whoa. at St. Vic's Hospital. He was. They did experiments on him for MK Ultra. I mean, it's a, quite an interesting story. He was one of the first people to get LSD as part of MK Ultra. Wow, was that part of the disassociation they're trying to create in his that brain? That was it. But he wow. knew one of the major people, made major players in MK Ultra, as he knew the Golden Circle, who were the people involved in today's uh, Great Reset, uh, which started with Maurice Strong and those uh, multimillionaires back there in the Golden Circle in Montreal. Wait, so who's Maurice Strong? Maurice Strong was one of the founders of our so-called uh, Great Reset now. Oh. He, his name shows up a lot, but we don't hear much about him today. But you'll find his name all over the Great Reset. How do you spell his name? M A U R I C E. Uh, Maurice M A U R I C E Strong S T R O N G. He's I'm part a... of Agenda Twenty One. All of that. Uh, you, you don't hear too much of his connections these days. But Canada had a really important part in both MK Ultra, Operation Paperclip. And uh, and the Great Reset. Wait a second. It says here. I'm looking him up on YouTube. It says here he died in 19 or 2015. He did. Yeah. Oh, Recently, okay. Recently uh, went on cosmic vacation, but he was one of the early. You know, the Great Reset's been going on for a long time. Oh yeah. You could say it really gained full steam ahead in the Truman administration as the Marshall Plan, the formation of the United Nations, the formation of uh, the CIA, uh, the NRA, all of those. All those were happening back then with the Dulles brothers, etc. There he is. That's Maurice Strong. Yeah, that was him. Interesting. So Maurice Strong. So it's interesting because I was watching something re just recently. It's so it's so crazy. In today's world with social media, you get so much information, right, from so many different places. But I was watching something and they were talking about, gosh, the financial reparations. I think this may have been Newsom here in our state talking about the financial yeah. reparations for slavery. And then we're talking, someone else was talking about the Great Reset. And oh, I think it was someone in England talking about all this um, infrastructure change and all this stuff. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, if there's a real pandemic going on, why, why are we talking about all these other things that are, that they're trying to do? I mean, it's so obvious to me what's, what's going on, but... If, if people are dying left and right, we should be focusing on saving lives. But instead, we're talking about uh, reparations and, uh, you know, financial resets. And it's kind of kind of interesting. Yeah, the, the flu, at the very least, it's a common cold. Uh, more people die of the flu than they do of uh, COVID. COVID has been around for sure 10,000 years. No novel forms, just continuous forms, especially ever since we got into pig farming and chicken farming, the major spreading of it. And they've known from pig farming, you can go back and see videos from uh, 2019, that the only way to uh, fight COVID is to use a, uh, the particles go for a mile and two. 
So uh-huh. they actually use a plasma generator to clean out entire barns. They've done that. We don't hear anything about that on the news nowadays. Wait, what do they do? Uh, they take a plasma generator to kill yeah, viruses they take some in kind barns? Of a plasma generator and clean the entire barn because they know that the COVID virus, well, if you sneeze, it goes 30 feet for sure. Uh-huh. But these little particles, uh, big ones and small ones, go various places. Uh, the large ones, when we keep our mouth closed, The nose, cilia, usually takes care of the big ones. Mm -hmm. And then our uh, mucus that comes out of the nose, that green slimy stuff, that captures the small ones and takes it out of our nose. When you open your mouth, you're more vulnerable to these uh, flus. So there's a lot to be said for people who uh, follow the Buteco method. And actually, it's an ancient American Indian method of keeping the mouth closed as often as possible, except when you talk. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know if you know, Adam, but um, I'm, I'm not sure if you're planning on anything for Thanksgiving or Christmas this year, but I, I wanted to send you the latest updates from Newsom about your what you're allowed and not allowed to do in your own house. Have you seen that yet? We saw the <laughs> list, yes. It's, uh, they're, ma- they're already making parodies of it. And of course, uh, Newsom is called Newsolini nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, it's so it's so crazy. I just don't understand. For those that don't know what we're talking about, um, Governor Newsom uh, here in California put out a whole list of what we could or sh- supposed to be adhering to during our holiday seasons. And you know, it's it's crazy. It's everything from making sure that everyone's six feet away from you to making sure that you wear your mask when you're indoors in your own home, in between bites of food. I mean, the whole thing is is ridiculous. Um, I, I just don't understand what what are they thinking, Adam? how they're going to enforce this. I mean, it's just, is this just put out there with no idea of enforcement? One of the problems is we have too many, what I call sheep bots. And, uh, uh, there's not enough of us who are woke to really repel this at this point, unless you get several millions of people together. And I don't see that happening, particularly in this country at this point. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the great reset is going to happen. Ironically, the only thing that can save us is nuclear war or some kind of big asteroid coming and getting us from outer space. Now, I hate to be cynical about it, but there's just too many people who have been brainwashed too long for over too many years by school, by the medical hierarchy and uh, things like that, you know. Yeah, check this out. I'm going to show this on the hierarchy. screen. Hierarchy. I couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> oh, hierarchy, yeah. So here's um, here's this list. I'm putting it on the screen if you guys are watching live. This is actually from the California Pu- uh, Dep- <laughs> Department of Public Health, and it says, to all Californians. Um, so it, it, it talks about the summary, and then it says, um, gatherings that include more than three households are permitted and all bold. Uh, this includes everyone present, including hosts and guests. Remember, the smaller the number of people, the safer. Um, keep the households that you interact with stable over time by spending time with the same people. Risk of transmission is reduced. Participating in multiple gatherings with different households or groups is strongly discouraged. Um, and that's just so so interesting. Don't attend gatherings if you feel sick or in a high-risk group. Um, it goes so far as to say wearing a, a face mask when gathering face coverings must be worn in accordance with a CDPH uh, unless an exemption is applicable. People at gatherings may remove their face masks briefly to eat or drink as long as they stay six feet away from everyone else outside their own household and put their face covering back on as soon as they're done with the activity. And here's here's um. Keep it short. Gatherings should be two hours or less. The longer the duration, the risk of transmission increases. And then there's something here that says um, instruments, instrumental music is allowed as long as the musicians maintain a, at least six foot physical distancing. And musicians must be or must be from one of three households. Playing of wind instruments, any type of instrument played by the mouth, such as a trumpet or clarinet, is strongly discouraged i mean this is just the most bizarre thing i've ever heard of Crazy. it's like a dystopian sci-fi <laughs> uh novel uh, gone amok i mean it's crazy it's a very bad screenwriter who wrote this whole thing and yet people are buying into it by the millions that's the really sad thing so many people are supporting our medical police state Now, even Illich warned us about this in 73 and 74, that basically they wanted to get individual rights for experts. 
experts know what our body is. We can go vote for someone, but we have to do it with their body. This is not our body anymore, according to the government. This is their body, and they can do with it what they want to do with it. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. It's my understanding that um, when it comes to these this corporate, you know, um, entities that are basically representing, you know, us, Adam Bergstrom in all caps, Justin Stellman in all caps, um, these are fictitious entities, right? And as the sort of um, authorized representative of those fictitious entities, unless we extricate ourselves from the physical corporeal nature of who we are and realizing that the captain of the ship is different than the ship, but they want to make you one in the same, um, does that not say that they do have the power to do this unless we point this out to them, do you think? Unless enough of us object to it. And probably the best way is to just boycott it. Like they don't need microchips on us because they can track us with smartphones and mm -hmm. people aren't going to give up their smartphones. And so they're voluntarily uh, uh, cooperating with these programs. Mm -hmm. uh, now, one thing is to boycott. In other words, don't buy their products entirely. Right now, the sales are down and it would be a, a grievance on most people to do it. But they really have to stop buying frills and buy survival items only, mm -hmm. get off the grid as much as possible. And that's the psychological grid as well as the energy grid uh, to get free of this. And they don't want that. They want everybody on the grid. That's why with solar power, you can't get off the grid entirely. They use it as an excuse. Stay on the grid. Sell the energy to us. Then right. you can always do that. But that's so they can track you and make sure they know what you're doing. They don't what want do you... you legally completely off the grid where you say, I don't want to even hook up to your electricity. It's illegal in many parts of the country. Yeah, I know. I've heard that. It's, it's crazy. What do you mean the psychological grid? Well, the psychological grid is the news. In other words, we hear ah. mainstream news and social media, for the most part, uh, repeats it. Uh, fortunately, there's substitutes like BitChute. There's a lot of crazy people on there, but there's a lot of people who really tell the truth and who have been banned on YouTube and Facebook platforms. Uh, I'm talking about Rosa Corey. She probably has the best explanation of how the Great Reset works in your local community. You can put the Great Reset into uh, their particular name, ICAA, whatever it is. It's a fake organization, and it's involved in all the improvements in your local community. You can look up Austin. You can look up Santa Barbara. You can look up whatever and find out who represents it in your local area. And so that's one of the ways they they set it through. Now on BitChute also, there's Dave Cullen, there's Spyro Scorus, uh, the Corbett Report, uh, even the amazing Polly gets a little wild sometimes, but she <laughs> has a lot of truth too in tracking things down. So what is that name, Rosa Corey, you said? Rosa Corey, she really understands more about the Great Reset and particularly what's going on in California. First, she has suits against uh, the San Francisco area for the Great Reset, uh, large, very large plan in Silicon Valley in San Francisco. That's interesting. There's a lot of really good people putting out good information, right? And um, so the question, so my question is like, you know, I think all of us that are content creators and people like you that are putting stuff out there and us doing radio shows, we're trying to figure out, okay, which which alternative social media site is going to win, right? Because, you know, like right now I could put our content on, you know, 12 different platforms and, and, and you know, spend 12 hours a day doing that. Um, and so the thing I worry about is like, is, is YouTube going to buy up the winner or the winners and try to get, put them out of business? That's the plan. Uh, more and more companies are becoming, well, uh, in Teddy Roosevelt's time, he split Standard Oil into about uh, 20, 20, 30 companies. Uh, oh, really? And nowadays, it's much worse. Wow. Like, we need a Teddy Roosevelt. I'm yeah. not a big fan of Teddy Roosevelt because he did a lot of corporate stuff on his own behind the back. He had another alternate uh, interest. But he did break Standard Oil up. Now, with Standard Oil, you just didn't have the control that they had then. You could just move west and get out of their particular oil grid. You could mm -hmm. buy a horse. Mm -hmm. uh, but nowadays, 
they have much more control. Uh, Bill Gates and uh, and Jeff Bezos have much more power than the Rockefellers ever dreamed of, or the uh, Morgans. Yeah, isn't Bill not Bill Gates, but isn't um, what's his name from Amazon? Um, Jeff Bezos, isn't he going to be like the first trillionaire? Yeah, and, they're up there. Have you heard that? Even on the crisis, uh, I believe. Uh, I forget. Is it a million, uh, a million, ex a billion extra a week that uh, Gates is uh, making off of this crisis? So you they know, want the whole world to be basically into some kind of first the green uh, revolution, then the gene revolution. Uh, they're they want the whole world. Uh, ever since the Marshall Plan kicked it off in uh, during the Truman administration, uh, when. Even Illich wrote his book, Medical Nemesis. He goes into the exact details, and apparently a lot of people never believed him. They've been slowly taking away the individual rights for the experts. In other words, I can't comment on my own health because I'm not a PhD, because um, I'm not a medical doctor. So I have no input on my own health because I don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. So I experts, however, experts and fact checkers, they know my body. They know my body like I don't know my body. Yeah. And see, that means you can't uh, take care of your own health. I have nothing against doctors per se. There's a story when Harry Truman was a young man. Uh, he cut off his toe. So what did the mother do? The mother ca got the toe, washed it off. The doctor came over with his black bag, bag, sewed it on, and Harry Truman's had a toe ever since. Really? Wow. That's good stuff. But they don't do that now. Now instead of looking at a patient, they want to withdraw totally and look at a test. Hmm, this test says that, that gene test says that, that blood test says that, this is that. Instead of old-timey doctors, they smelled you. They looked at you closely. They used tapping on your body uh -huh. because they could tell by resonance what organs. They could tell more about your body by tapping and timpani than they could by the, the this, uh, CAT scans that we have today. That's crazy. That's so crazy. We're with Adam Bergstrom. This is episode 675. If you guys want to grab the show notes, his website is sunsinknutrition.com and solartiming.com. And um, if you're unfamiliar with that, we'll talk about that a little later on in the show so you guys can get an idea of what it means um, to eat on time and chronobiotic nutrition. Um, but it's interesting, Adam, you know, the way I see this so far, it's it's so fascinating watching how this all plays out. And it seems to me like this was maybe a test run for 2030, maybe. And they were, I think, a little bit surprised at how it's been going for them. And I think they're trying to dig their their heels in a little bit and you know put the pressure on a little bit more considering the response of the world. Um, what do you think about that? I agree. I think they never dreamed it was going to be this easy. They've uh -huh. known about cr crowd control and manipulation <clears throat> when they hijacked psychiatry and psychology for their own purposes with the Creel Commission, George Creel, Edward Bernays, uh, and, a, and a, a list of other people who were into crowd control at the time. Semiotics, mm -hmm. they called it, different names for it. But mm -hmm. they've been brainwashing the American public for well over a century. Uh, probably since the end of the 1800s is when it started. Uh, but they're getting better and better at it now. So they crashed psychiatry uh, by making it into making us into meat so they can give us drugs to cure the problem. In other words, psychiatry and psychology originally, in its origins, your mother-in-law, your attitude towards your mother-in-law or your father or your mother caused your problem. Uh -huh. But they wanted it the other way around. Oh, no. The reason you don't love your mother is because of serotonin. The reason you don't love your father is because of dopamine. The reason you don't love your ex-wife is because of uh, nitric oxide or whatever uh -huh. chemical is uh, in their estimation. So people like Dr. Amen basically have it like a... You know, the, the chemicals control your emotions, but it's the other way around. They're wagging the dog with the tail uh -huh. because the real problem is that the way we react to trauma, our, co our cognitive trigger points determine the shocks in our lives. So just one emotional shock can bring on cancer overnight or a heart attack or any kind of disease. 
my work with mind hacking since the 1970s has seen case after case where I've actually seen people get well when they find out who is the matter with them instead of what is the matter with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about mind hacking. What, what is that? Well, mind hacking, uh, body language has fascinated me for a long time. And uh, there's mainstream uh, uh, body language, which has to do with a jury duty reading, basically a character personnel. Like if you're, if you're going to employ someone, you want to know if they're lying and are telling the truth or editing. Okay. And there's a lot of that that goes on. One of the things now with video, you can tell when people are fibbing to you because if they're editing or outright lying, they touch the side of their nose or ah. they touch the top of their nose. Or they put their finger over here, underneath the nose. Now, this is, it has to be taken in context because if you see this and that combined, that person is probably going to punch you. They've got their nose out of joint. They're wow. angry at you. That so kind of body language is very uh, good to know if you're out and about and see certain things that you can get a pre-warning of what's going to happen. Many people in the N uh, the uh, the NLP community NLP. use it to pick up women now, and it works very well because they have all these techniques worked out. There's books been written about it by style and mystery about yeah. how to do it. That type of body language is valid. I deal with the type of body language where people lie to themselves, mm -hmm. where who is the matter with me, and instead they want to convert it to what is the matter with me. And uh, what is the matter is almost always, well, 100% of the time I found it associated with a who, no matter how great the disease is or how mild it is. So you're saying if someone has a condition of any kind, Alzheimer's, dementia, rheumatoid arthritis, cancer, heart disease, um, there's always going to be some, I always think there's some emotional component, but you're saying there's actually a person connected to this as well, someone else. Well, that's the, uh, the emotion. And actually, there is no emotional traumas. The emotions are all work really fine. Let me give you an example of them. If you're familiar with Jake, uh, uh, what is his last name? Uh, Pansap. Pansap. Yeah, Pansap. Jake Pansap. Pansap. J-A-A-K. He's called the mouse whisperer. Oh. And he has seven emotions that are primary. Seeking, uh, uh, fear, lust, care, grief, play, and something I can't even... Rage, of course. Rage. Oh, interesting. <laughs> the, okay. These emotions are primary. They work fine. But a cognitive problem is what happens. It's the interpretation of the emotion. So it's never an emotional trauma. You can't get emotionally cleared. You want to get a cognitive trigger event cleared. And why is that? Okay, say I have an emotion of, uh, of fear, okay? Uh, someone is coming at most people with a red-hot poker saying they're going to torture them with them. Uh -huh. They're going to be in fear. But what if you do that to a masochist? They're going to react with fear if you don't apply the poker to them. Okay. So, of course, it's not in the emotions. They work fine. They've been with us for, for uh, millions of years, actually, the emotions developed. In fact, Jake Pearson has, uh, Paxson uh, has probably worked out the most uh, complex or history of how they developed in time because they either appear in the so-called reptile uh, brain. It's mislabeled, but let's just call it that for purposes of instruction. And the limbic system is where the rest of them, none of them get into the cognitive area, but where the traumas occur are in the cognitive area. Like Jake, Pier he could never find a trauma for war. War is caused by a cognitive misuse of all those emotions and drummed up through using those emotions inappropriately. So there really is no emotional clearing, but there is a cognitive uh, clearing. And it always turns out to be a who is the matter with me. I mm -hmm. have never found a person that 30 years after the fact said, I'm going to get even with that step, the third step on my on my uh, cellar uh, stairway tripped me and I'm going to get it. I'm going to get even. But I have <laughs> found people who are 80 something years old and they're still grieving over the fact that their uh, child was lost in childbirth 
at 18 years old. Oh, wow. Still in tremendous traumas and uh, with complex life changes and uh, and decisions based on those traumas. So in that case, that's that's interesting. In that case, would you? How would you work with a person, let's say, that had a, a trauma of losing a child? Let's say they're 20, 25 years old. Um, and what we're saying here, it's not necessarily the emotion behind uh, the reason why someone gets sick, but uh, a traumatic event connected to a person. What would you do in that case? Um, how do you work with people that have a you know, traumatic event around a, a, a person in their past, for example? Uh, one of the ways, if you use uh, mind hacking, the body gives you the answer. And one of the simplest ways is you take the feet and you simply turn them in a figure eight, a sideways figure eight motion. Okay. And you ask them questions. When they react to who's the matter, the female will appear on the right side and the male will appear on the left side. It sounds okay. like magic, but it's true. However that ended up, our physiology is not by accident. Left is male. Uh, right is female, even though we're taught by many people, it's exactly the opposite. And so right away, you can tell who's the matter. They have a gender. Uh, it traumas are really, really, really rare. Every once in a while, you do find somebody angry with the third stair on their stairwell <laughs> down to the yeah. uh, cellar. But I tell you, I think I've only found three cases of it in my entire career. Wow. So in this case, so, I mean, some people may even know that that's an issue before they even see you. It's not like they need you to tell them my traumatic event was, you know, when my you know child died at childbirth or something like that. So they already know that. Um, if that's the case, what do you do now that it's recognized? What do you do when you work with someone and they you figured out what the trauma is and then what's the next step? You know, the, the interesting thing is that most people don't know their actual traumas because it's the traumas they don't deal with or don't remember that they have the trouble with. Oh. Uh, if, you, if someone punches you in the face, you punch them back, equal. There's mm -hmm. no trauma over that. You punch them, they punch you. Now, if you didn't feel that you punched them enough, that can be a trauma. Oh. But some of the worst traumas are over minor things. I hate my aunt, but she has a heart condition, so I can't tell her anything back. Those are the traumas. But let me give you an extreme case of the other type of trauma. And do we really remember them? A woman came to me that was given a month to live. I don't even remember the name of the syndrome they gave her. The doctors gave her this thing. She had a month to live. Wow. During the session, an amazing thing came out. She had totally forgotten that she was multiply – had – her, her uh, father abused her sexually for multiple times and got her pregnant, and she had an abortion. And oh totally, gosh. it was gone out of her memory. She remembered that day, and she was living for eight or nine years after that from her so-called fatal disease because it was cured instantly when she found out who was the matter with her, which was her dad. Oh, my gosh. What a crazy, crazy story. We are with Mr. Adam Bergstrom. We're going to take a little break right now. And Adam, when we come back, I have a question for you um, because that is really interesting story. When you have situations like that, I want to know how do you protect yourself? Because for me, when I hear stories like that or, or I, I hear friends and family coming down with diseases, it really affects me. And I, and I, um, I kind of take that on a little bit. And I, I, I want to just help them and do all these things. So I'm curious how you deal with that. Um, if you guys are enjoying this show, make sure to check out Adam's website, sunsinknutrition.com. And this is episode 675. We're with Mr. Adam Bergstrom. And we're gonna take a little break and we'll be right back right after this. Forget superfoods. Colostrum is mammals' first food. containing the essential building blocks for growth, gut integrity, and immune health. Often referred to as liquid gold, colostrum is known to balance immune function, support digestive health, and increase endurance and lean muscle mass. Colostrum's naturally balanced and living nutrition, which supplies growth and immune factors, is a delicious dose of restoration that's easy to use in powder or capsule form. Clean, conscientious, tested antibiotic-free, and produced in a U.S. GMP-certified facility, it's your first food for second chances.
So there you go. That is the colostrum that we're super big fans of. Let me bring this up on the screen here so you guys can see it. Uh, this is awesome. And Sir Thrival is running a little ad right now or a little sale. Um, let me see what it is here for you guys if you're interested in buying some. It is um, coupon code healthy gut, um, all one word, H-E-A-L-T-H-Y, gut, and the sale goes until, let's see, October 31st, 2020 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time, so that'll be 8.59 p.m. Pacific time, October 31st for the colostrum. Great, great product, big fan of it, I use it every single day. We just ordered uh, some more colostrum just a couple days ago. So uh, using the coupon code. So really, really great. So here's another product that we just love so much. It's our Relax Far Infrared Sauna. We've been using it every single day. And here is our good friend, Ken Pressner talking about it. Also saunas, which I was listening to in the break. I'm a great believer in saunas. In fact, I take a sauna myself nearly every day. Uh, and um, they're, they're tremendously effective for uh, detoxifying um, metals and um, other uh, toxins from the body yes yes my friend sauna therapy is really really great um i do it probably i think four times a week now with two-year-old twin boys <laughs> it's like i'm lucky to get three or four times a week and i miss it too i just love doing it so much because you sweat out so much and um i was also learning recently that apparently far infrared light uh, when it hits your your tissues creates what they call that fourth phase water um, which is really interesting too, another um, side note to the sauna therapy. Um, but here's a little clip from our biological dentist, Dr. Stuart Nunley, talking about um, the you know sauna therapy and how he was able to uh, recover his own health by doing it uh, many, many years ago. Uh, you know what I chose to do? I chose to go very, very slow as I detox. So one of the things that I did is I invested in an infrared sauna, oh, okay. which was huge. That was a big, big part of my healing because interestingly enough, many times patients who have heavy metal toxicity lose the ability to sweat. Mm -hmm. And so, I and I was one of those. I could not break a sweat. And mm -hmm. the infrared sauna helped me to retrain my body to be able to sweat. It was a huge part of my overall detox. Doesn't Hal Huggins, Dr. Huggins, say as long as there's more going out than what's coming in, you're okay? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and I think he's right. I think yeah. he's uh, absolutely right on that. Yeah, and that's our, our biological dentist, Dr. Stuart Nunley um, in Marble Falls, Texas. And his, uh, his website, if you guys want to check him out, I highly recommend. He's just the, one of the best dentists in the whole world. Um, HealthySmilesForLife.com. And we recently drove out to see him, I think a couple months ago, um, for the second time. We've been seeing him for years, since uh, 2010 or 2009. Um, but the second time with kids, um, and what a great guy, what a great guy, but he uses, uh, far infrared technology to help because he was removing people's mercury's fillings before he understood about all this stuff, uh, without protection. And so he was, his body was loaded with mercury. And that's one of the things he did to overcome that is using a, um, a, um, far infrared technology. And so what I like about this one though, is that it's portable. You can break it down. It heats up instantly. Uh, there's very, very low EMF coming um, just about 16 inches um, off the ground. It's just a little magnetic field, but um, it's just in a tremendous, tremendous piece of equipment. I've been using it for about eight years now, um, and just a great tool that I recommend to everybody to sweat and to detox. So um, if you guys are interested in the colostrum or the Relax Bar and Fred Sauna, I'll put links to it at extremehealthradio.com forward slash 675. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook right now, there should be links down below uh, to grab this. So make sure to go do that and make sure to get the colostrum as well before the sale ends. I think it's a 15% discount, which is great, great. Oh, and they also have, I think the other um, product that they have is their digestive bitters as well. Um, it's kind of a digestion promotion they're running right now. Coupon code healthy gut um, until October 31st, 2020 at 11:59 PM Eastern time. So yeah, make sure to go check those out, support the show and go look at those awesome products. And we're going to be right back right after this. You're listening to Extreme Health Radio, and I hope you're enjoying this show. Please share it with your friends by tagging at Extreme Health Radio on Instagram. Stay tuned for new shows weekly. 
So we get so many people asking, where's Kate? When's Kate going to come back? And uh, gosh, I miss having her on. But it's things have changed radically <laughs> for us since having our kids. Uh, you know, as you can imagine, twin boys, two years old, you can imagine how, how much things change. And so um, we're going to try to figure out a way to get her back on the show because I love having her on and uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. So um, yeah, follow us on Instagram if you guys want. For as long as they'll have us, we will be on there if you guys want to follow our stories. Uh, we post usually the stories and let you know about you know things we're doing in our personal life as well, but also when we're going to go live on shows and things like that. So uh, make sure to follow us on there and tag us too. Please tag us and share it with your friends. Uh, we'd greatly appreciate that. Um, so this is episode 675 with Mr. Adam Bergstrom. His website is sunsinknutrition.com and solartiming.com. And let me bring him back up on the show because my question is, um, kind of before we went to break there, is how do you not let this affect you, Adam, when you see people coming in and they're working with you and they've got three weeks to live or they've, or, you know, they've got these crazy diagnosis? Um, what do you do to protect yourself from from that? An excellent question. And it affected me personally in the 1970s. When I first got into reflexology and the reflex sciences of different kinds, muscle testing, etc., I thought this is all mechanical. It doesn't involve psychology at all. Even mm -hmm. though I'd had a strong background in psychology, devouring books from high school on and actually going to the Jung Center for two years in Houston. But uh, I thought this is totally different. This is reflexology, right? Reflex sciences. Well, one day after I signed up to go into a Donald Lay's school, the Texas Institute of Reflex Sciences, I worked on a friend of mine and I fixed his back. I fixed, I put that in parentheses. Uh -huh. uh, and he, he got emotional. He started crying and he said, I've been to a doctor and a chiropractor and they couldn't control my pain. You did it. Thank you. So I went over to a friend's house and I sat down to watch TV and my back went totally out like his did. Oh, wow. So I went to my mentor, Adonal Lay, and he said, well, you worked on him and then you got his step. It has to go someplace. Mm -hmm. So I was very freaked out about it. And even though I was going to a school called the Texas Institute of Reflex Sciences, I wouldn't work on anybody for three months until I learned exactly uh, some defense systems and what to do about it, plus have a backup system of Adonal Lay to undo me. And by the way, when Adonal fixed my back when I came to him, my friend's back went completely out again. So this is uh, sounds really woo-woo, but it's very true. And uh, when I first learned reflexology from Dr. Steve Shiver, he would uh -huh. do techniques for clearing, like you would shake your hands off, like you're shaking cold water off your hands. Okay, and, right. uh, and so I did that kind of stuff. I thought, wow, this looks cool. You know, I'm a shaman. <laughs> Oh, I'm doing this and doing that and feeling good. But I didn't take it seriously until that happened to me. After that, I did all kinds of techniques. One thing, put your hands in cold water because just like in sex, you're a hot mama or you're hot for somebody. Uh -huh. We are stimulated and have relationships in heat. When we're cold, like someone gives you the cold shoulder, then you separate from them. So anytime I work on somebody, I tell people to wash their hands in cold water. One time I worked on a problem so serious in New York that I ran down three stories of, of uh, stairs and put my hands in the snow. Oh my gosh. So, but it, it, it's a very real thing. And I used to teach uh, reflex sciences, starting with plain old foot reflexology and then applied reflexes in the ears, the nose, auricular therapy, iridology, mm -hmm. all of those as another weekend course. But my first course always started with one hour on how to protect yourself because it, it is a very real deal. And people often get diseases by, uh, by mental contagion. There's yeah. a famous story and it appears in many different uh, traditions about a, uh, a, a, a wise man, a yogi, who's sitting by the, the wayside along the path and watching people go to the uh, back and forth. And a man comes walking back and he looks a bit suspicious. Uh -huh. So he said, where are you going? I'm going to the Kumbla Maya. My guru has told me, uh, or the, the, the Lord of Karma, that I have to take a thousand people with cholera because it's their karma. 
And the yogi thought, well, that doesn't sound like any big deal. Sounds reasonable. Go on your way. But then he reads in the paper, not a thousand people, but a hundred thousand people died of cholera. Now he's uptight. So he waits for the guy to come walking back and he stops him. And he said, I thought you said a thousand people, but a hundred thousand people died. And the man said, yeah, I just took a thousand. The other 99,000 got scared to death. Oh, my gosh. So there's a lot to that. Mental contagion is a very real thing. That's why they put in magazine covers what to do when your parents go to the nursing home. They don't say if. They yeah, say right. when. You're already programmed to do it. And they always use when, not if. They're very clever in their structure of language to brainwash you because all of us are in trance states already when, when we're born. Once mm -hmm. you come out of the womb, it, it happens pretty quickly from the parents, from the church, from the school, mm -hmm. from brainwashing in all manners. And then we get the mainstream news and television and social media. And pretty soon... We don't even have a, uh, a choice in the matter because we've sold all the parts out of our psycholo psychology into various other avenues. Mm -hmm. That's why most people really don't know what their traumas are. And when I give that example as an extreme one, most things I worked on uh, small. To give you an idea how body language can fool you, uh, many people have knee injuries that are really fake knee injuries. It often is fake. So one time I had a girlfriend in Houston. And I went and saw her, <laughs> and uh, she had a knee problem with her left knee. Uh -huh. Well, left was male, so I suspected it might even be me. Okay. So I said, what color do you think of? She said, yellow. Well, that's decision, so you have to make a choice about a male. Uh, weak need is making decisions, you know. You're uh, weak right. in the knees, so you can't make your own decisions for yourself. Uh -huh. Well, she said, yeah, the problem is you. I have to find out if I want to be in a relationship with you or not. Uh -oh. I said, okay. So we did a <laughs> session and I went over to uh, my guru or my mentor's uh, clinic, uh, Adano Lays. Uh -huh. And we were at that time dancing to a recording of Prisoner of Love. You can find it on the internet. So I'm dancing away, freeforming wildly. Yeah. And Adano said, it's the phone. It's for you. So I picked it up and she said, I've decided – I want to be in a relationship with you. I said, great. I hung up the phone. I started dancing, and immediately my right knee gave out, and I fell to the floor. But on the way down, I knew, do I want to be in a relationship with her? Uh, so what <laughs> do you think? It was transferred? Was it transferred to you because right for you represented a woman? A woman. Yeah, no, I had the trauma. She had the trauma before, but she made her decision, so her knee was working fine. Now mine was. So this wasn't really transfer. It was trauma. Uh, one woman came to me. She had seen her mother, and it was so uh, so tough on her. She said, life has brought me to my knees. Now, one of the minor things she said is, and she had a serious knee injury over that. Oh, wow. One of the other things she said, though, life has cut me off at the knees. And I said, you're just lucky. Your unconscious believed your more frequent mantra of uh, life has brought me to my leaves than cut off at the knees because then you wouldn't have any right knee, which was her mother, which was the trauma. Wow. That's crazy. Crazy stuff. Um, at the beginning of the show, I remember I, I called you a contrarian of contrarians, you know, and I was explaining to our Academy members this morning that, you know, there, there is definitely a mainstream alternative, you know, and you're definitely not that. Um, but you said before the show, you had some new insights on Lipofuscan. And for those who don't know, let's dig into that a little bit and, um, and talk about what you've been learning recently about that Lipofuscanosis. Well, the main thing is the mainstream now is admitting that uh, lipofuscin or omega-3 fatty oils behind it are involved in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, uh, Crohn's disease, on and on and on, lists of all these diseases. Even Wikipedia has admitted. They leave out the oil part, but they the lipofuscin is there. Uh, when you do an analysis of a 100-year-old man, you find 75% lipofuscin. 
And at one time, they thought lipofuscin was passive. It was just cellular garbage you were accumulating. Mm -hmm. uh, so say I'm in a room here, and I pack all my belongings, and it's getting smaller and smaller to room or, uh, walk around. I walk around it. But it's not like that. It's having – it's like being in a room full of rodents that you're collected because the lipofuscin is aggressive. It starts attacking the other cells and speeding up the aging process. So uh, lipofuscin now – why they're so interested in it, they don't want to just stop you from getting it. They want to come up with a cure. And what is their cure? A molecular facelift. They're going to go in there with genes or with lasers and eat up all those little lipofuscans that are in your cell. And, of course, that's going to cause more problems, and the inflama inflammatory reaction will cause the extra polyunsaturated fatty acids in your body already to make the problem worse. But they don't care because they're making money doing it. And lipofuscin you're going to hear about is big business for both the genetic people and the laser people and a whole bunch of associated high-tech people. Does lipofuscin does it get, does it store primarily in the cell, like in the lysosome, and prevent like prevents the cell from getting rid of waste material? Is that part of what it's doing? All over the place. Uh, see, uh, Aubrey de Grey is correct with his seven deadly sins of uh, aging. He knows and knew back a long time ago that lipofuscin is involved in two of those uh, categories. The uh, Inside the cell and outside the cell, junk inside and junk out cell. It's mm -hmm. mostly uh, lipofuscin. But now there's his seventh sin is called glycation. And people have mistakenly thinking that's a sugar problem. Sugar issue. But actually, it's more, again, goes back to lipofuscin because you'll find that the chemicals involved in that aren't sugar. It's mostly proteins and uh, omega-3 fatty acids, the same things that cause the problem with lipofuscin. You can't have lipofuscin without omega-3 fatty acids. That's the DHA and uh, EPA and uh, ALA that we get. The fish then, oil too, right? Yeah, and fish oil. Yeah. And even in eating cold water fish, you know, there's a difference. If I want to eat uh, a cod, I can get away with it pretty much with a lot of cod eating because the the cod the oil goes into the liver as long as i don't eat the liver then i've got the cod so the oil is not in the rest of the fish but in oily fish like salmon then you get it now that oil can actually extend your life if you're underwater if you're a shark in the arctic and you're down to a thousand feet below the surface you can live for a thousand years some of those sharks do because wow. the oil is so thin but as you get into a colder climate uh, fish farming now has to be done with uh, a uh, Mon Monsanto product called ethoxyquin and with uh, vitamin E and with selenium mm. to keep it to retard the aging. That won't stop the aging of the salmon and the yellow fat disease, but it will make the meat at least acceptable to you if they harvest the salmon early enough. What do you now, think, Adam, about um, Dr. – you know how Dr. Cruz talks about, you know, eating lots of fish and how, um, you know, this creates a DC electric current in the body and, and, you know, affects the cell membrane and the voltage of the cell and all this kind of stuff and helps create ATP by creating that electrical voltage. Um, and he, his, his big argument is that, you know, um, omega-3 is necessary to create that voltage in the body um, and electrical current. Um, what do you say to that? Is that true, do you think? Uh, no, it's absolutely <laughs> false. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, it's been brought out by other people than me, so I guess it's safe to say it now, including uh -huh. a guest on your show, that look at the age spots on Jack Cruz's face. That's right, right. exactly like a Now, if you have them on your face, uh, insult makes them worse. So you will get age spots if you expose yourself to a burning or to solar radiation or a variety of things only if you have the lipofuscin there. Mm -hmm. But most people collect the, uh, the lipofuscin in the colon to cause brown bowel disease resulting uh. in Crohn's and IBD and all these other syndromes. Oh, wow. Or they have it in their heart, shrunken heart uh, disease. Now, they avoid brown heart disease cleverly because in 2019, they patented the brown heart 
uh, emoji, see? So so it's hard to look up. I used to be able to <laughs> find uh, Brown Heart. Fortunately, I have my references, but now Google has made it exceedingly hard to find, hard to find out that the heart has to do with uh, disease, uh, with yellow fat disease. Now, actually, lipofuscin is supposed to be a marking of aging, chronological aging. No, it's a sign of biological aging because one person can age at 10 miles an hour and another person at 150 miles an hour. Uh -huh. It's not a, uh, an equal opportunity. Uh, well, it's an equal, equal opportunity if you eat right. right. Uh, the trouble is with the, uh, with the, uh, when you get that uh, biological thing, they claim that in all the other diseases like Alzheimer's, it's a problem with lipofuscin, but it's normal aging in the heart. Of course, anyone into longevity will realize that's uh, ridiculous. In fact, people may have heard the term lipofuscin and seroid. For years, they've been confused, and they confused me for years too. Lipofuscin and seroid are exactly the same thing. They just made lipofuscin, the seroid result, is the one that results in... Uh, abnormal aging things mm -hmm. that are like usually genetic diseases and rare are the genetic ones and lipofuscin was normal aging i mean it's normal to age so lipofuscin's okay when you hear lipofuscin and you hear seroid basically it's the same thing wow and, is lipofuscin do you think at least a physical cause of all disease like i know it's a correlation but do you think it's a physical cause of all disease only three out of seven. Now, the real reason we age is the mind. <laughs> when you ask people about death, even with a simple muscle test, they blow, blow out their muscle. If a person says, I'm so many years old, it weakens a person. Uh -huh. You can strengthen a person by saying how many revolutions around the sun you are. Right. And then it will actually strengthen the muscle. <laughs> because, That's see, great. we think of aging as a linear process. So you're either here or you're here in regard to aging. So in other words, how long till you fall off the edge of the table? Is it gonna be 10 years or it gonna be 100 years? Uh -huh. So on so many years young, you're still on that same flat table until mm -hmm. you think otherwise. But then people started using uh, the, uh, the revolutions around the sun uh, in an inappropriate way. Oh, I'm too many revolutions around the sun. Uh. No, when you get revolutions, you get energy. Would you rather have a 5,000 RPM car or a 10,000 RPM car? You know, <laughs> so it's RPM. So then Adonald Lay started using the term uh, number. He gave a cycle. My, my number is 10. What's your age? My number is 10. My number is 6. He just get a number through numerology so people would get out of the idea of aging because trauma is what makes us age or or Freud correctly identified a death urge and a life urge. The mm -hmm. life ur urge is eros, and the death one is thanatos. And uh, they're both there. Most people are committing suicide. In fact, uh, Leonard Orr back in the day said all death is suicide, and I tend to agree with him. That's interesting. If you were to take out a lipofuscin, if you were to do a surgery or something and take it out and, uh, and analyze it under a microscope, what does it mainly consist of, do you think? Uh, mostly deformed protein, which is probably because it collected it out of mitochondria and other places in the body. Uh, and it will have small amounts, 2% of iron, manganese, magnesium, all of the minerals collect mm -hmm. in there. Iron is the most reactive because lipofuscin basically becomes much more reactive under the influence of iron. Mm -hmm. And of course, iron used to be put in vitamin pills back when I was in the industry. Oh, yeah. And uh, I warned people about it then. <laughs> and then finally, they listened to me after they started taking the iron out of the supplements because it's a problem. Ray Pete goes into that a lot about mm -hmm. how uh, iron is mostly the devil. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that bad. But uh, most people get too much iron. And here, here's an example. A man, I was brought to see a man who was dying. He was totally bedridden and he was given so many times, so many uh, months to live or weeks to live uh, by a doctor again. And he said one of the problems he was dying is he had a black stool. And I said, black stool? Are you taking an iron supplement? He said, well, yeah. He said, 
is it a doctor's iron supplement or in other words is it uh is it uh what is the name of their uh, uh particular Ger iron? geritol or is it geritol no, they, or what's they have a particular type of iron i can't even think of the name of it now but the, yeah it only can be bought in the pharmacy you cannot buy that iron and would it never be sold in the health food store so he said go to my cabinet and check there it was, the particular type of iron, the iron sulfate, I think it was. Wow. And I said, stop taking this and you'll be fine. And he was. <laughs> he didn't die. Wow. But what about all that excess iron that was you know, in his body from taking it you know, previously? It'll eventually wash out. Now, here's the trick. Uh, vitamin C, what we call vitamin C, is really chelated iron. You can't have vitamin C active without iron to some degree. So here's the thing. If you take iron with vitamin C, you add a lot of additional iron to your body if you really need to. But if you want to cleanse the body, you take extra vitamin C without the iron, and especially vitamin C foods, it works even better. Mm -hmm. And then it starts to ferry the iron out. It chelates it, takes it out, and it goes in the toilet. So that's all you have to do. Plus, there are iron-blocking foods available too that you can take some are not so good like soy uh but others uh can be eaten and then it basically eats up the supply if you don't put it in it eventually goes away you don't have to do uh bleeding and all of that kind of things like mm -hmm. uh, they tell you you have to do what was the what was the new thing did you mention it already the new thing that you learned about lipofuscin i know we kind of i asked you well, but did you mention that yeah, the fact is that the uh, the scientists now are escalating their research on it because they want to do molecular facelifting. Oh, that's right. They want right. to get in there and attack your cells <laughs> and clean. Instead of, you know, facelifting and uh, plastic surgery is big, big, big business, Michael uh, Jackson yeah. style, etc. You can see a lot of people in Hollywood. Look at them. They are obviously had facelifts. Uh, so what they want to do, though, is convince the public lipofuscin is bad. We've mm -hmm. been talking about that for a long time, but now they want to say, but we can cure you. Just come to us and we'll do genetic therapy and get it all out of your body, which is impossible. But they're not going to let you know that because they want to make money at it. And there's big money in going to a doctor. These, these techniques will very be, be very expensive. They'll be targeted to uh, well-off people with lots of money, the, mm -hmm. same, the same crowd they get for expensive uh, multiple plastic surgeries, mm -hmm. and that's what they'll do. So lipofuscin is essentially um, like an oxidized lipid, right, that enters the body and the body can't utilize it, so it sort of gets stored, and it's in like nuts and seeds, it's in fish, it's in lots of our food, oxidized lipids, and then um, it basically it bioaccumulates in the tissues and the cell and everywhere throughout the body, right? And um, and basically through this oxidation process is what's breaking down and causing disease? Exactly. Uh, well, actually seven deadly scenes of a aging, three of them are that. There are other things involved too. Genes do play a role. Okay. Mitochondrial genes do play a role. Mm -hmm. And there's other factors as well. Uh, but uh, the, the yellow fat disease is one of the major ones. And certainly selling people fish oil, flax oil, chia oil, and those type of oils is escalating the process. Now, strangely enough, sometimes if a man takes uh, excess uh, fish oils, he can actually prevent or slow down uh, prostate cancer. Uh, uh -huh. Because they basically he loses the function there before the cancer comes. So there's a relationship. Uh -huh. But then it, it just retards it, and it's not an appropriate therapy. Cancer and old age are opposites of a spectrum. The middle way, the razor's edge, is where you go through the passage between the two. We either are too acid or too alkaline. And the trick is to navigate down the middle and have health. Uh, if we become too solid, like a table, that's not practical. That's not life. If we come too liquid, like water, that's not life. Instead, we want to become structured water or a colloid or protoplasm. Of course, Gilbert Ling talked about protoplasm and how it was so popular years ago. Then they abandoned the idea for <laughs> sodium pumps and 
Water inside the cell is exactly the same as outside the cell. It makes no difference whatsoever because there's more money in having receptors. Right. Estrogen has a receptor. Sodium has a receptor. Potassium has a receptor. And we have a drug, and it only goes to that receptor. It doesn't oh, go anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting how that works, right? Interesting how that works. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a break right now. We're going to come back and spend a couple more minutes with Mr. Adam Bergstrom from sunsinknutrition.com and solartiming.com. This is episode 675. If you guys are watching on, let's see, Facebook um, or Twitter, I think we're broadcasting there as well, um, and you want to ask Adam a question, uh, come over to our YouTube channel. Um, go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash YouTube, and you'll be redirected, and you should see our live show there. And uh, ask your question in all caps. So we'll spend about another 10 minutes with Adam after the break um, answering a couple questions if you guys have any. And if not, I have a ton more questions for him as well. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. Please pass it on to your friends if you would. That would be really, really great. Uh, we're going to take a little break right now and show you this cool product that I like a lot. It's aloe vera. And then I encourage, you know, we can talk more about this. How, what do I do to help people speed up the healing of leaky gut? Mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned aloe before, mm -hmm. and that is one of the herbs that I definitely recommend, you know, using for helping to heal leaky gut. You want to use herbs that are anti-inflammatory and soothing and healing to the intestinal lining. Um, so aloe is a great one. Yeah, aloe is really, really great. I recommend this um, a lot to our people in our academy and everyone if they're having any kind of gut issue. And if you guys are watching on YouTube or Facebook, there should be a link right there that you can see. And what I love about aloe vera is um, it contains over 75 different compounds, vitamins, minerals, enzymes, amino acids, polysaccharides. Um, and Stockton LO1 is an awesome, awesome option for that. And you guys can, you know, the best option would be to grow it. That's always number one, right? It's like, you know, with red light therapy or anything else, nothing beats the sun in nature. It's the way God, you know, designed it. Um, but this is raw, so it's never been cooked. It's hand harvest, it's unfiltered, unprocessed. They don't heat it, there's no preservatives, there's no chemicals. And what they do is they ship it, they, they clip it, and they ship it right after they harvest it. And um, it's an amazing product. And uh, I would really recommend getting some for you and your family and getting on maybe um, just a regular maintenance protocol, like an ounce or two a day is what I like to do. And it's just a tremendous, tremendous product. And if you guys are looking to help digestion and really soothe and make your stomach feel really, really good and just increase. I mean, um, Rodney Stockton, the, the founder of that company, I think he lived till he was 96. Um, he said it was, you know, had to do with the aloe vera he took every day, but I think he was just trying to, trying to market that product before he, <laughs> he left. I don't know, but, um, I'm not sure, you know, he lived because of the aloe vera, but um, it's just a great, great product to be on because digestion, as you guys know, is everything. So um, order this um, Stockton Aloe One. It's really great. I know you'll love it. It'll really help your digestion. Um, it's just a great, great product. And we like supporting good people and good products. And also, here's another one too. Um, this is from our friend Robert Mueller over at Barfold. This is a product that we haven't really talked about in a long time, but if you guys have any dogs, any pups, consider putting them on a raw diet. Um, this is a great, great product called Barf World Raw Dog Food. Did you know that conventional dog food contains antibiotics, herbicides, pesticides, ground up carcasses from roadkill subjected to high heat processing, artificial colors, chemical preservatives, way too many carbohydrates, genetically modified corn syrups, indigestible grains, and a lack of moisture content in the dry kibble? Obviously, this can lead to health conditions like diabetes, itchy skin, teeth and gum problems, liver damage, obesity, behavioral issues, pancreatic problems, and even cancer. That's why we recommend the BARF diet, which is the biologically appropriate raw food diet from BARF World. Their unprocessed raw meats contain bone, organ meats, vitamins, and minerals that are loaded with enzymes. BARF World founder Robert Mueller explains more. Sure, I don't have to convince you on the damage that's caused by high heat to food. So as a result, we see many skin disorders, a lot of arthritis, obesity, heart disease, cancers. I mean, it's just rampant. The pet clinics are just all of these conditions and basically a large percentage of the commercial pet food that's made is made up of the human industry leftover and the pet food industry makes use of this waste product and in addition to that we are subjected to the products coming out of the rendering plants garbage in garbage out if you feed garbage 
and your dog, you're going to end up with garbage health. You know, if you put the right gas in, your engine runs smoother and lasts longer. So if you put the right fuel in the tank, you're going to get the right output. Garbage in, garbage out. We've seen an immense difference with our dog Maggie being on this diet. Give your dog the gift of health today by going to extremehealthradio.com forward slash barf or go to our store. That's extremehealthradio.com slash barf to learn even more. Looks like my audio was out for a second, but yeah, brought up the Barfold raw dog food. Uh, consider getting this some, you know, for your dog. I think they're really going to love it. They've got different flavors, just a great product. So um, this is how we sort of keep the show free, and this is how we um, offer great products to you. We like to support good people, and you get a good product, and we keep the show free, and it's really great. So um, check out Barf World raw dog food. I'll put a link to it at extremehealthradio.com. Let's see. What are we at here? 675? 675. And I'll put a link to it um, there. And if you're watching on YouTube and Facebook, there should be links for these uh, down below as well. So we're going to take a couple questions from Adam Bergstrom and talk more about um, his website, which you should definitely check out. And we're going to do that right after this break. You're listening to Extreme Health Radio where we talk about real solutions to help you get better. We're 100% listener supported. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a show. Yeah, so subscribe to our email list. Subscribe to us on YouTube. If you're watching on Facebook, subscribe to us on there. And we don't know how long we're going to have these um, these platforms. So the best thing to do would be probably to subscribe on our newsletter. That way you get kept up to date with all of our uh, stuff that we have going on and here we go let me see mr adam are you still there can you hear me i hear you clearly oh great 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 uh before we take some questions what are you going to do rest of today you're going to do anything fun out there and do some research. Uh, that's always fun for me. Uh, yeah. With the internet, it's made it so much easy. Before I had to show up at medical libraries, sometimes I would move right next to them in one case and showed up at 7.30 when the doors opened and left at 2 o'clock when they closed. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Because I lived right next door, uh, for lunch I would go and leave for about a half hour, 45 minutes. And I used to have to fill out a pass every time I went in till the head of the library finally said, this guy spends twice as many hours as any of my employees. Just let him in. Right. Stop oh my asking gosh. him for forms. <laughs> <laughs> but That's now with the Internet, I can find old books from the 1700s even and find out that the medical profession was a lot smarter back then before they started dumbing people down. The medical uh, profession, as it was at one point, had a lot of really good points, and they didn't try to overpower and take over the entire world like they're doing now. Yeah. Now we don't have medicine. We have a medical police state. There's a very difference. Back then, you had responsibility for your own health. You could make a decision. Now they say you're making the wrong decision. This is the only way to go. It's chemo or it's this or it's whatever they've got planned for you. And there are other ways. You know, it's Adam's. It's really cool. I, I'm going to bring this up for you because when you were talking about the library, it reminded me of this book. Or not this book. I'm sorry. This uh, YouTube channel that I watched. Uh, I watched it the other day when I was in the sauna. I usually like to watch little documentaries and things. And here's the one I'm going to bring up here. Um, it's from Truth Stream Media, and you'd probably like this video. It's pretty good. Um, it's called, let's see, And Then They Came for the Books. And it's 42 minutes long, and it was published a week ago. So if you guys are watching or listening in the future, it was published on October 23rd, 2020. That's called And Then They Came for the Books. Um, pretty fascinating, you know, um, how they talked about the library and how they're shutting libraries down now, and Google's trying to get it all into this whole... Um, sort of, what's the right word? Um, the scanning of all the books, you know, and they're trying to overtake access to all the information, and it's fascinating. It is. And right here in California, you know, the pot industry is going fine. It's actually saving this particular county I live in, which is the epicenter of pot in the country, if not the world right now. Wow. Uh, it's saving it with its taxes. But in all the businesses that they regard essential, 
our libraries are not due to consider opening until April of next year. Is that right? Even consider opening. And wow. I doubt if they're going to be open. And to me, they want school because they want you to be brainwashed with their point of view. Uh -huh. But when I was a kid, I was saved by the libraries because I was a library educated dissident from the yeah. time I was in the ninth grade. Once I found out that the library had the real books and that the uh, what I was being taught in school was bogus, then I read widely and deeply at that point. I was in and out of the library. I mean, sometimes I've actually gone to three libraries a month, checking out 10 books at a time. So I've had as many as 30 or 40 books out at a month when I'm going oh through them. Gosh. That's so great. I used to do that too, get um, those ILLs, so it's interlibrary loan. So you get a book transferred to you from some library on the East Coast or something and um, you know, a rare out of a print book or something like that, they'd ship it to you and then you could read it. And, uh, you know, that's, it's fascinating to get information like that, but you know, if they're going to shut the libraries down and, and put everything sort of more digitally, then it's much easier to be a gatekeeper. Right. And the only person who, or the only, I should say company that's actually sort of monitoring and keeping up with all this stuff is Google. And we all know the problems with Google, right? Google has their own source of information, but they don't generally share it. And they don't teach people <laughs> how to, to search. Uh, when you search for things, there are ways to get past their uh, gatekeepers. And one way is to pretend you're someone else. They put you in a filter bubble by making you believe, or they take together what your personality is and put you in that. Uh -huh. But you can do social engineering. You can pretend you're a wholesaler and get a whole different view of information by just pretending you're someone else you act like you're looking for things that are going to sell certain things in the medical profession or the supplement uh possession and that you're an insider and once you're regarded as an insider google will take you right in through the portal into the secret passages yeah it's like getting access to uh, club 33 in disneyland or something you know it's like <laughs> I saw a funny post here um, from Pirate Pete on YouTube. It says, um, the libraries are all closed now to, due to BS-19. <laughs> <laughs> I like That's great. BS-19, that's great. Um, so tell people a little bit about SunSync Nutrition. I'm going to bring it up on the, on the page here. Um, and this is more your membership website, right? So this is where people um, can get access to more information that you talk about, right? Uh, $99, and we have uh, a color recycling uh, video that uh, takes us through the colors, which can actually clear a lot of traumas by itself. And those colors I've gone through before are black, gray, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and white. I have just cleared some of your audience, at least to a degree. You do it over and over and over again, you get to a certain advantage. So as you see, there's lots of things on SunSync for a member. It's one membership, it's $99, and it's as long as we're around, you know. So hopefully, I hope to be here a long time. Our other website is solartiming.com, and that's where we sell the books. Uh, uh, I have, I think, about 45 books now. In fact, the humor of it, I overheard uh, you talking to Matt Blackburn and speculating uh -huh. that I had written 11 books, and I hadn't. Well, <laughs> when I wrote the ninth one, I promised I would not write a tenth one no matter what. I did. After I heard that, I started writing an 11th book. Oh, I lost goodness. interest writing about COVID, but just recently, uh, something came up with a lot more information and when I realized, I remembered that conversation you had with uh, Matt, uh -huh. I started writing it again, and it's almost done. I'll, almost, I'll be releasing my 11th book on yellow bat disease. It's not sold as a compendium for $99, the whole thing, wow. for people who really want to know the insides and outsides, and how Monsanto is leading the fight against uh, yellow bat disease while lying about it to their face because they have a way to destroy the yellow bat disease on the planet without people being uh, aware of such a fact going on. That's so crazy. So it They've seems like... They've been involved like... in yellow fat disease with ethoxyquin and other chemicals since the 1960s. So there are people who know about this. It's not, it can't be attributed to dumbness. The only dumbness in the people who are believing the other because they don't have a way to research. And for people who do not wish to buy my books, simply put in yellow fat disease over and over, 
and then the truth becomes if you go and put omega-3 fatty acids all you're going to find it's a cure for bones it's a cure for insomnia it's a cure for this it's a cure for that it's a cure for that in fact in ucsb here they did research it was proven that native americans had 50 percent omega-3s and 50 percent omega-9s what about the apaches geronimo never ate a fish in his life because in the apaches the zunis and the navajo it was forbidden to eat fish <laughs> oh my gosh and look uh, geronimo managed to be super strong as a warrior a brainy businessman he died virtually a millionaire by selling uh, trinkets and buttons that he kept selling on his uh, uniform to make money and he only died at 80 because he got drunk and fell off his horse and got pneumonia lying in a puddle all night. <laughs> My gosh. So I brought this thing up here. I mean, this is the kind of thing that I was talking about before where there's a, a mainstream alternative. And and my friends, like, well, if you're listening to this, thinking to, my, you know, to yourself that your doctor has told you that omega-3s are healthy and these types of things, um, just make sure you do your research because like this health line, I'm not sure who they are or what they, or, or what they are, but I mean, Adam is a guy that spends hours upon hours upon hours researching and researching and researching, and he's showing you um, all this information that's contrary to this. And if you get this wrong, like here's a, a bit here, um, omega-3s can promote brain health during pregnancy and early life. And I, I couldn't think of something more destructive that you could do for your brain during pregnancy. Exactly. Exactly. It, it dumbs both the mother down and the child and causes deficiency. And we have such an increase in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and MS and muscular dystrophy and Crohn's disease. All of those, you'll find multiple forms of lipofuscin. And lipofuscin cannot form, heart disease cannot be created listen impact you know you hit your heart with a sledgehammer maybe uh -huh. but otherwise life of fuskin is involved in omega-3 fishy oil, uh, fatty oils mm -hmm. now by the way i have never found i i assume that omega-6s are bad too but i've never found a single case in all my writings of an omega-6 calling causing yellow fat disease really so I leave the writing about omega-6s to other people. Uh, you know, Ray Pete is against them, and a lot of people are, even mm -hmm. though I get suspicious when a whole bunch of people are against it. But I really believe they probably are a problem. Dirk Pearson and Sandy Shaw, back in the days of life extension, I believe they wrote it in 1981 or 82, uh, they were against all those type of oils, and especially DHA. They oh, wow. recommended ethoxyquin, the Monsanto project, product uh, to fight uh, DHA and EPA. Wow. Are you still doing the, let's see, the sugar? Because I think the last time we talked, you were doing five pounds of sugar a month. Are you still doing that? More than that. But you can go <laughs> overboard on sugar, so don't necessarily take my advice. I buy mine 50 pounds at a time, white Whoa. and fine sugar. And, and by the way, you don't have to worry about it being organic because when they refine a the sugar, they take everything else out. You get mm -hmm. brown sugar and other types of sugar, you're in for trouble because then the glyphosate is commonly used even in non-genetic foods. They use it instead of burning the sugar peels, they just spray it with glyphosate. It all dies. And they do that for sugar beets too. So, uh, uh, But I'm experimenting with it. Sugar is a medicine. It definitely can prevent all kinds of things like COVID and flus and a bunch of other things, pneumonia. Many people wouldn't die. Bed sores, bed sores that are considered incurable and the person's going to die. Nurses just used to put white sugar on it, took care of it immediately. You don't need honey. All you need is uh, white sugar. That's so interesting. So the potassium pump, the cell membrane, uh, sugar is bad for you. Omega-3s are bad for you. Um, eating on time. You have a lot of contrary. And did I miss anything? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of other things. I'm against serotonin, nitric oxide, and have many good reasons for that. Now, Ray oh, Pete wow. is against a lot of those things uh, too. I'm not really a Pitarian, but I admire his uh, brain. He always comes out with some amazing research, and uh -huh. uh, I mostly regard uh, Emmanuel Ravisi as having the strongest overview. He lived to 101. He has a textbook for free on the internet. Uh, he just put in Ravisi 
a textbook and you'll go to that crazy pharmacist and it will open it up. I've been studying that textbook since I was able to get my own copy of it before it was on the internet since uh, the 90s when I first found out about Ravisi. And of course, when I first found out about Ravisi, they had an incorrect interpretation. So it drove me crazy because I realized he was on to something, but it didn't add up. Finally, when I got a hold of the medical textbook and got a hold of the Ravisi clinic uh, themselves and got additional information, then I was able to put the picture together. And they have a more complete uh, overview than Ray Pete does. There it is. Uh, but Ray Pete doesn't realize a lot of times he validates what Emmanuel Ravisi says. So when I read Ravisi, I knew to avoid fish oils, except he said for certain purposes you could get away with it for six weeks at a time. Yeah. So at that point, I would use a little cod liver oil once in a while, but never over three weeks or a month mm -hmm. because uh, it automatically set off an adrenal reaction that can be really serious for a lot of people. What do you think of Morley's take on the cod liver oil? He says that um, omega-3s aren't necessarily as bad, but they're, they're bad when they come into an iron toxic body, and that's what makes the omega-3s uh, bad. So he recommends cod liver oil. I, you know, for vitamin A and vitamin D, I think, I'd much rather just get my vitamin A from animal fats myself, but rather than cod liver oil. But what do you think about that, his, his take on that? Uh, they're good for a lobster because a lobster has Cooper globin. It doesn't use iron for its blood. It uses copper as the center of its uh, blood uh, molecule. But okay. human beings, if we use iron, then omega-3s are going to be a threat to us uh, just from that alone. Mm. Uh, because iron is one of the main weapons that lipofuscin uses in its artillery. It also can use aluminum, manganese, and other ones too. They're highly involved in, uh, in uh, Alzheimer's and other diseases. But the main thing is iron and lipofuscin. You put them together. So it's pretty hard to, uh, to avoid the consequences of omega-3s. Now, right. I agree with Ray Pete that it's not too bad to get cod liver oil because uh, compared to fish oil, at least the cod liver oil has protective D and protective A and some other things in there that make it worthwhile taking. But I, in my books, have shown numerous cases of people who took uh, over, overdosed on cod liver oil, took too much of it, and got severe cases of yellow fat disease where oh, they, wow. they, they died quite early. It's been known since before the Civil War that cod liver oil could cause it. But that's why they respected it as a medicine. If you had no other source of vitamin A or no other source of vitamin D, when obviously you do, mm -hmm. the, the uh, Inuit Indians up in uh, Canada, when they tried to give them fishing nets, they knew the fish would kill them. Because they were the people of the caribou. They did caribou and they did mammals like seals and whales. Ah. They only used fish as a survival food. It would work. Interesting, they'd give the salmon to the, the sled dogs, even mm -hmm. though they knew that they were shortening the life of their sled dogs at the time. But uh, <laughs> Farley Mowat, you know, Never Cry Wolf, uh, 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 several, quite a few books and movies have been written off of his. Uh, literature he went into it in detail how fish oil uh killed could wipe out the indian tribes they would rather starve to death than eat the fish because that would be a more painful death than death by starvation wow that's crazy guys check out solartiming.com and um and adam i'm gonna go through like what are some of the other titles of your book here that people can um or books that you've written on solar timing that people can purchase you know uh, my mind hacking book is uh, is available that has a lot of techniques on how to use the uh, the uh, cornerstone technique and other techniques to access uh, the body. I have one on acid alkaline. Most people think that acid is bad or alkaline is bad, and actually you want to walk the middle road. Uh -huh. There was a book called uh, what was it called? Uh, Alkalize or die. I oh, read I a remember. Book called acidify or die as a rebuttal but yeah. <laughs> of course we want to be in the middle but all diseases are part of acidity 
or alkalinity. And guess what? It's not in your blood. Your blood is too well buffered. You have to go to the local area and the total area. If I measure acid alkalinity in my urine or my saliva, that's liquid. I'm not made out of liquid. I'm made out of protein. I'm made out of fat. That's mm -hmm. not even measured. It's not <laughs> even in the uh, in the rate. You have to get something called tetramic acid alkalinity, uh -huh. which is well defined in my books and also in Ravisi's work. So uh, I forget. I have so many. Uh, and he mounted his horse and rode off in all directions. So. Yeah. If you have a certain subject, I've probably written a book about it. I've written about magnesium. Uh, I've written about vitamin D. I've written about red light therapy. Uh -huh. I've written about color recycling, mind hacking, a compendium of body language, a lot of them. That's We're so thinking cool. of starting a course, by the way, of combining the woo-woo body language with the standard body language and uh, releasing four of our videos three of them woo woo and one mind hacking uh -huh. and two of our books as part of that and have an extended course for a year where we send out various uh, videos for instance in body language you ever see someone do this say that guy's crazy oh yeah 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 it automatically weakens you when you do that so you're making yourself crazy not the other person that you're pointing at oh so, okay so so this is the kind of thing that if you want to strengthen your brain or your learning power you go this way now that's an important woo woo type of body language that's very important or oh, building brain power by simply going tap 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 zone one tap 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 zone two tap yeah. tap 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 Tap, 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 tap. I aced out my case at Texas, my uh, test at uh, uh, Texas Institute of Reflux Science, not by study. And I figured either this crap works or it doesn't. So I sat in the corner and tapped my brain till the test huh. came out. I was the first to finish. People thought I flunked and I tied with the last guy at 91 points uh, that turned in his paper. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Wow. Well, Adam, thanks so much for being on the show, man. It's always so much fun talking to you. And, uh, I, th I you know, let's do it again. And um, so you said earlier you were going to go do some research. What are you going to research today? Uh, I'm, I'm particularly finishing up the uh, end of the uh, yellow fat disease book now. Okay. And, I, and I'm rewriting a compendium of body language. But uh, I'm going to take time on that. Uh, do the course with the books involved. So we're going to arrange how to do that course. There'll be information on Facebook, uh, on solar timing, and elsewhere. You'll be able to find that information. I'm readily available on Facebook for people, by the way, if they if they want to chat with me. Uh, okay. I can't answer all questions, especially Facebook has made it very difficult with all these threads within threads within threads. Oh, Sometimes yeah. I go through my site and I find a question that was asked like two months ago. Yeah. And it takes me that long to answer it because it disappeared <laughs> in the labyrinth of Facebook uh, threads. That's so funny. Yeah, so they haven't kicked you off. That's always a good sign. They kicked me off twice. Oh, twi only twice. One, okay. One day, three days, and I've got warnings out all the time. So <laughs> I have pretty much abandoned uh, the COVID thing. We started a bit shoot thing. I'll put a couple of things up there. But basically, uh, there's a lot of good information. Uh, you know about uh, Dave Cullen, and now you know about uh, Rosa Corey, who is right. a very good source. You might consider interviewing her. She knows more about the insider plans of the Great Reset than most people do. You know? Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to have to get her contact information. That's awesome. But, but there's a lot of good sources. We also follow Dave Cullen regularly. He keeps pretty well up to date what's going on. And, okay. uh, and there's other sources. You know, We like uh, Pam Popper, but she's pretty much just getting into stories and thinks she can fight this with lawyers. If mm -hmm. you fight it with lawyers, you're buying into the system. You're just right. helping it. So, mm -hmm. so you have to be, we have to really figure a way uh, to deal with this. I'm not smart enough to figure it out all myself. So I hope a lot of people come together and they figure out ways to outwit uh, the Great Reset because it's in full swing now. It's oh, headed yeah. uh, to its ultimate destination like a train going to the edge of the uh, cliff, you know. And mm. uh, we really got to stop it or there's going to be really serious problems for humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Well, Adam, thank you again so much, my friend. Um, we'll be in contact and I'll send you the link when this is all done and, and you can share it if you like. But uh, appreciate your work, my friend, and thanks for being on. I really appreciate it. 
Thanks for having me, Justin. Love to Kate and to you and to everybody else. Awesome. Thank you, Adam. I'll be in touch soon. All right, there you guys go, Mr. Adam Bergstrom. I hope you enjoyed that show. Interesting what he was talking about at the end, right? Where he was saying we really have to, um, we really have to start focusing on on solutions for us to, um, you know, create a better world for us, right? Um, really, really fascinating. And I think that um, we're in a great reset right now and we really need to start thinking about ways to make a better world for ourselves. And, you know, um, we're working with someone in our academy this morning. We On Friday mornings, we have a live uh, member chat where anyone can join and we get to hang out as a group and share stories and ideas. And we're helping a lady in there, uh, Bobby, uh, get off her medication basically and she's been really successful in it and she's um, gotten off i think all of her medication but one and so i was helping her with some ideas and you know she was saying she's 76 years old and she was talking about her journey of overcoming the medication and um, looking at ways to strengthen her bones and so as a group we were helping her and i just was so happy that she was able to get off those medications because this is a this is a huge deal, and when you hear someone tell you, "Oh, I got off my medications," you know, it doesn't sound like a big deal, right? But this is so huge that someone who is 76 years old would take the time and the effort to research their symptoms and figure out ways to get off their medication, and in the face of the fear that the doctors try to put on people to stay on those medications, and then researching. So, I mean, could you imagine being behind the eight ball like that, taking four or five different prescription drugs, uh, being 76 years old and have to figure out technology and then have to manage your doctor and working with your doctor and managing through the fear of uh, him trying to tell you, him or her trying to tell you that you, you're you killing yourself and blah, blah, blah. I mean, this is why we do what we do. And it's no small thing. If you're working on getting off your medications, like I, I cannot congratulate you and cheer you on enough because this is a small thing, but it represents a big thing because this is where the control that the pharmaceutical industry has. This is, this is the strong stronghold that it has on our government. Our government is beholden to the pharmaceutical industry. I was listening to someone just recently talk about comparing the differences between the pharmaceutical industry and the oil industry. And he was saying that it, the pharmaceutical industry makes the oil industry look like kindergarten. It's orders of magnitude more powerful. And so the average person is on, I think the average person over the age of 30 is on one to two medications. And over the age of 50, I believe it's three to four medications on average. So if we can work to get everyone off of prescription drugs and start taking control over their own health, and then once they're off and they regain their health and then they start not supporting companies like Monsanto or not supporting um, big agribusinesses, you know, and buying organic food and then putting their money behind organic farming. I mean, this is huge. This is like this is this is massive because this is the problem is that all of us, we want to vote for Donald Trump. We want to vote for Joe Biden. We think these presidents, these these presidents elect are going to change the way things are. And it's simply not the case. It does no good. If you think Biden's going to change, makes the best change. If you think he's going to change, you know, um, world and your life for the better, but you still take pharmaceutical drugs and you still take and consume um, food that's not organic, that's sprayed with pesticides, and you still buy into that whole model and you still watch TV, it, it, you might as well not even vote, in my opinion, because voting doesn't really mean anything. How are you living your life? Donald Trump or Joe Biden is not going to change how you live your life. And this is the problem that we get. I understand all of this stuff. You, you want a savior and you want a, a leader that's going to, you know, make the world a better place for you. But that's on us. That's, I mean, we have to create a vision for our life and how we want it to go. And we, this is the ego. The, the ego wants to solve all the problems of the world. The ego wants to, you know, fight global warming if you believe in that. The ego wants to fight homelessness. The ego wants to fight starvation in Africa and all these things. But what we all have to do is focus on changing our life. Like, how, what companies are we supporting when we buy food? 
What companies are we supporting when we're watching the mainstream news? What companies are we supporting when we purchase our clothes, when we buy our cars? What companies are we supporting when we go to the doctor and get put on a prescription drug? Like, fix those before you're going to vote and think that that's going to make more of a difference in fixing those. If every one of us fix those issues first, it wouldn't even matter. Voting wouldn't even matter because these are the things that need to be fixed first. Before we want to, you know, solve all the world's problems, we have problems in our own life and we need to fix those. And so this is why it's so, I was so happy when this lady in our academy this morning, Bobby was telling me that she's off almost all of her drugs. Like, man, that's so huge. I'm just, that's so great. That's one more person that's taken responsibility for their health and taken away a little bit of power from the pharmaceutical cartel or as Robert Scott Bell calls it, the church of pharmaceutical mysticism. It's true. It's a spell that they're selling to everyone. Healthcare. It's sick care in the form of pharmaceutical drugs to make you sicker. It's not healthcare. So this is why I'm such a big fan of changing your life before you get on a soapbox and think that voting is going to make any difference. Um, I'd rather see a nation of people not vote and change their life and you know, for the better than to vote and think that's going to change more. I mean, to me, it's all about the life that we're creating around ourselves and who we're supporting by the actions we take. And this is the big deal. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that show. That was episode 675. If you like the show, please do me a favor and share it with your friends. Uh, sign up to our newsletter. Um, that's probably the best way to stay in contact with us. Just go to extremehealthradio.com. And we just send out emails a couple times a week and let you know of past shows, upcoming guests. Typically, the way it works is like this. Um, there's usually a live show on Friday morning um, on YouTube or Facebook and Twitter. And that show as an audio podcast gets produced and on iTunes and Stitcher and SoundCloud and all those places and not SoundCloud, Spotify and all that on Sunday night. So if you're subscribed to us on an audio platform like that, like as a podcast, um, every Sunday night, um, you're going to get a brand new episode. And then the other days of the week are our best of episodes. So six days a week, you get our past best of shows. And then on Sunday night, you get our new episodes. And that's kind of the way we're, we're working it. So that's this way, because we have so, I mean, this is 675. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shows that you probably have never even heard of or listened to before that we, and the, the information is completely relevant um, to today. So uh, we like highlighting and featuring some of our older content so you guys can stay up to date. And if you don't, you know, if a podcast doesn't interest you, you know, just delete it and wait for the next day and, and see if that one does. So um, if you guys could, it would be, it would mean a lot to me if you could share the show on Instagram or kind of, the, I think that's the main platform now or Facebook, uh, please consider doing that because uh, the, the censorship is real guys. Um, you know, we, we're, we're getting emails all the time from YouTube and uh, I think it's only a matter of time until we're off that platform and we're going to be looking to move to other platforms as well. But the censorship is real, especially leading up to the election. Um, and they don't want anyone talking about alternative anything. They want everyone just parroting the mainstream media. So um, share our shows. If, you, if there's other shows that are interesting to you, share those as well. Just get good information out because somewhere, sometime, people are going to listen to that and listen to an episode, and it's going to change their life, um, hopefully, for the better. So whether it's our show or, or someone else's show, I, I just would really appreciate you consider sharing good quality content that's going to help um, make the world a better place because this is how we're going to do it um, because, you know, they're trying to censor us and other people like us who are speaking the truth. And when you guys share it, it helps get the word out. So it's um, really, really beneficial. If you guys would like to support our work and you're looking for products, um, you know, we have all kinds of great products that we mentioned, you know, during the show. But um, go to biochargeme.com or biocharge.me. And that's our store. And we put all kinds of products on there that we use and we promote and sell. Um, and that helps to pay for our bandwidth. It helps to pay for um, this whole setup that we have going on here and doing the live shows and the software that's involved and all that stuff. Um, as well as, you know, helping to allow us to, you know, make a living doing this and paying for our little boys, Will and Ben, to eat good food and all of that good stuff. So um, if you're in the market to buy something like a, like a rebounder or a sauna, we have multiple types of saunas on there. Um, or looking for like a Rife machine or any kind of like device, um, come over to biochargeme.com and see if, we're, if we carry it. 
and go through our link and nothing changes for you when you click over you purchase it just like normal but it supports our work and the in the work that we do and keeps everything free for everybody else so we appreciate that a lot um and if you want to take your health to new levels i, I really recommend joining the extreme health academy this is an awesome place guys um, this is something that we're considering doing as an upgrade here in the academy is that um, doing breaking out into small group sessions and masterminding with you know a maximum of five other members live um, and really working with individuals um, by, by themselves on how we can upgrade their health um, that's something else we're doing. We're putting together a community map so you can find other uh, Extreme Health Academy members in your area. Every Friday morning, we have a live Zoom session so we get to hang out and share ideas. Like we're all working uh, together as a group, helping Bobby get off her medications and strengthen her bones and sharing ideas for her arthritis. And um, so there's power and strength in community. And I think more than now than ever, uh, we really need to start surrounding ourselves with like-minded individuals. And this is where and why I started, I started the Extreme Health Academy. Um, go to ExtremeHealthAcademy.com and enter the code EHR14. That will give you a free two-week trial. And come over to the forum, say hello, and I would love to meet you and um, work with you. Working with people every day in the forum, sharing ideas, and um, from my research and my experience uh, since 2003. So I love you guys so much. Thank you again for... Um, just for being here and being a part of everything we have going on. Um, it really makes me happy. So I really appreciate that so much. Uh, this was episode 675. So I'll put the links to the Academy and to all of the people Adam Bergstrom mentioned too, all those Ravisi and the books and all that kind of stuff. I'll put everything at extremehealthradio.com forward slash 675. So all you gotta uh, remember is 675 and that will get you there to this uh, show page for this. Cause I realize a lot of people are listening uh, if you're like me, you, you, you listen while you do the dishes, you listen while you go for a run or go to the gym or something. So just remember 675 for today's show. Uh, love you all so much. Thank you again. I'll see you guys, Academy members. I'll see you uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time next Friday. And I'll see you in you guys that are watching the radio show 1045 next Saturday or next Friday with um, Dr. Gerald Smith. And we're going to talk with him about some of the work that he's doing, I think in particular with cancer. So um, again, love you guys. Thanks for sharing the show. Thanks for becoming a member of the Academy. You guys rock and have a great weekend. And I'll see you next week. No material on this blog is intended to suggest that you should not seek professional medical care. Always work with qualified medical professionals, even if you educate yourself in the field of live food, nutrition, and alternative medicine. I'm not a doctor, nor am I offering readers medical advice of any kind. None of the information offered here should be interpreted as a diagnosis of any disease, nor an attempt to treat or prevent any disease or condition. While information in this blog is discussed in the context of numerous conditions, it can be dangerous to take action based on any information in this blog or to start any health program without first consulting a health professional. The content found here is for informational purposes only and is in no way intended as medical advice, as a substitute for medical counseling, or as a treatment slash cure for any disease or health condition, and nor should it be continued as such. Always work with a qualified healthcare professional before making any changes to your diet, prescription drug use, lifestyle, or exercise activities. This information is provided as is, and the reader slash viewer assumes all risks from the use, non-use, or misuse.